All right, so as many of you know, there's specialized cells within your retina that sense light that thereby influence your body's circadian clock system, neuroendocrine functions like your mood, your affect, memory, focus, sleep, attention, and even hormone regulation. So what we're going to do today is take a deeper dive into the neurochemistry of this and talk about this new paper which was a conglomeration of multiple experts in the field of circadian physiology and retinal physiology to help you better understand the recommendations for how much light you should be getting during the day and how to avoid artificial light exposure in the three hour window before bed and also while you're sleeping because it turns out that light is almost like a nutrient. It's as important as protein, as macros, as exercise, as sleep. It's really influential and impacts neurocognitive function, impacts circadian rhythms, impacts hormones, and everything throughout your body. And we're going to really sort of drill down on this. And I would encourage you to actually get a meter that can assess light. I've just purchased one. It should be coming tomorrow. So we'll do a little video review of that later in the week so that you can really fully appreciate you know, if you're getting, you know, quantify, to quantify how much light you're getting during the day and then to actually go into your home and see, gosh, this is exceeding the amount of intensity of light that is, you know, considered healthy by this expert panel that could, you know, if you're getting excessive amounts of light, um, how you could mitigate that to improve your sleep to improve your mood, your memory, your focus, your attention. It turns out that when you're exposed to artificial light at night, it can impair your attention the next day. It can impact melatonin release, growth hormone release. We know there's this epidemic of low testosterone, of adrenal fatigue, early uh, menopause, perimenopause. Well, what if we're just having excessive amounts of artificial light that is you know, sort of augmenting our circadian clock system? And so we should be a little bit more vigilant about that. And what I love about this paper is they help to quantify the amount of lux that you should be getting during the day and by the way, the lux is the way to quantify the intensity of light. For example, if you stare right at the sun, that quantifies, you know, you're getting over a thousand lux by being outside during the day and so forth. And if you're in an office, it might be, say, 500 lux. If you're watching TV, it's in the 400 range when it really should be in the 30 range in the three-hour window before bed. If you're staring at your phone, it's about 60 lux, which is double what the expert consensus panel recommends in terms of uh, how much intensity that light is impacting these intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglial cells that communicate with the suprachiasmatic nucleus within your hip hypothalamus that influences your whole central and peripheral circadian clock system. So again, you have photosensing retinal cells, these melanopsin photosensing cells within your retina. This, this is part of the non-visual part of the eye. I believe they're part of the cones of the eye. But this pigment is able to pick up on light intensity, and that intensity influences then your circadian physiology, melatonin release, growth hormone release, cortisol, leptin, all of these hormones that have imbalanced levels in people that are overweight, uh, that have you know, cardiovascular risk factors, that have a heart attack. You know, the circadian clock system is impossible to disentangle from all of these different diseases and ailments and problems. And so since light is such a big influencer in the jargon that they use, an entrainer, um, because light entrains the circadian clock system, it sort of feeds the flywheel of the diurnal rhythms, we need lightness and we also need darkness at the right times. And so we're going to dive into this paper and talk about the nuances and talk about the specifics about how much daylight you should be getting, about how to avoid artificial light in the three-hour window before bed, and how to make sure your bedroom is really dark because there was a really interesting study finding that people that had a small amount of light coming through their bedroom, independent of other factors, increase risk factors predicting a future heart attack. So you got to think about this in the context. If you're doing everything to minimize cardiovascular risk factors and lose weight and be healthy, but yet you have a TV in your bedroom or you have a nightlight or something to that effect, you could be, uh, you know, sort of jumping over dollars to save pennies. So the title of this paper is Recommendations for Daylight, Evening, and Nighttime Indoor Light Exposure to Best Support Physiology, Sleep, and Wakefulness in Healthy Adults. This was recently published in Plus Biology, and I will link that below in the show notes and, and much more. So friends, before we get into it and talk about the specifics, as always, I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for that like button. Thank you for sharing this directly with a friend via text message. Say, hey, watch this video. There's cool images. You got to check this out and be more mindful about light exposure. Also, friends, uh, one of the things, one of the tools that we have over at our sister company, Myoscience, 
are solutions to help entrain and support your body's circadian rhythms, like adrenal extracts in the morning can be very helpful for helping to kickstart that circadian awakening response and circadian rhythms and kickstarting cortisol release and much more. Also in the evening, we have a great powdered sleep support formula that has inositol, L-theanine, taurine, GABA, magnesium. So this is part electrolyte, part sleep enhancement, and part healthy glucose metabolism. As always, friends, we can't diagnose, treat, or uh, cure any disease here. We're just talking about supporting health. But if you like circadian-aligned nutrients, check out myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience with an X.com. And you can use a coupon code podcast to save at checkout. So what I would like to do here is just sort of read what I thought was very interesting direct quotes from this paper so that you don't have to, you certainly, I recommend downloading it and reading it yourself, but I know you're busy. That's why you tune into podcasts and videos like this. The scientists go on to say, ocular light exposure has important influences on human health and well-being through modulation of circadian rhythms and sleep, as well as neuroendocrine and cognitive functions. Prevailing patterns of light exposure do not optimally engage these actions for many individuals. Basically, what that means is that how most people, sort of their light hygiene it's just, it's not compatible with health. And that's why we see so much chronic disease and susceptibility to acute, acute infections. They say, but advances in our understanding of the underpinning mechanisms and emerging lighting technologies now present opportunities to adjust lighting and promote optimal physical and mental health and performance. So again, anyone who has any mental health issues, anxiety, depression, inability to focus, inability to concentrate, they should be extra mindful uh, about light exposure and light hygiene. And we're going to really drill down very, very soon here about that. They go on to say, besides supporting visual perception, ocular light exposure influences many aspects of human physiology and behavior, including circadian rhythms, sleep, alertness, both central, uh, both the central circadian clock system and then the peripheral circadian clock system, mood, neuroendocrine, and cognitive functions. This array of retinal-driven responses to light, collectively termed non-image forming, they're going to say non-visual, are important determinants of health, well-being, performance, and are closely and clinically relevant as evidenced by current light therapy for circadian rhythm, sleep disorders, and various forms of depression. Industrialization and urbanization have progressively and dramatically altered individuals' light exposure, like the street lights that are right outside your apartment, your condo, or your home. Those annoy the crap out of me. Uh, also, uh, we have lights, th these compact fluorescent light bulbs that last, you know, until infinity. Well, they are very bright, uh, putting out probably between 90 and 100 lux, and that's augmenting melatonin release, growth hormone release, and more. So they say due to spending more time indoors where electric lighting provides the dominant source of illumination, you know, we are augmenting these uh, clock systems. So they say substantial evidence indicates that such altered light exposure patterns uh, contribute to negative impacts on health, sleep, and productivity, ranging from acute increases in accident risk to increased incidences of cardiometabolic diseases, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and certain forms of cancer. And they have multiple references that you can dive into. So therefore, there's an urgent need for evidence-led clinical recommendations to inform design and application of light emission technologies and human light exposure. So what I would like to do here is just share with you... Um, these images here, this is figure two, and this shows the uh, melanopic EDI, which is the lux, okay? So basically, um, remember, the lux is a way to, to characterize the intensity of the light. When you get near that 100 lux range in the evening, that's when you get a very significant amount of melatonin suppression. So you might say, well, 100 lux, that's so much. That's like looking at the sun. No, that's like watching your television with the compact fluorescence above you on. Many people are getting this much exposure every night, you know, before in the three hour window before bed, and they wonder why they can't sleep. They wonder why they can't lose weight. They wonder why they crave junk food. They wonder why they have this dawn effect and their blood sugar goes through the roof when they're sleeping. Well, it's probably due to the melatonin suppression via the increased intensity of the light. Because it's not just about sort of the, the color hue of the light. Well, we used to think, well, it's the blue light that is particularly problematic. Well, I'm not saying the blue light is any more benign than, than other. Uh, it's certainly not helpful, but it's actually the intensity of the light. That's what we need to understand is the lux because these photosensing neuronal receptors here, uh, the, the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglial cells, they are just picking up on light intensity. 
when it's very intense, those retinal cells seem to transmit the messages that it's daytime. And so, and that relays neurochemical cues to the main circadian clock sort of hub called the SCN, suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus, which is part of your hormonal regulatory system. So you can start to see here how maybe just one night of going to a concert or one movie is not a big deal or one red eye flight is not a big deal. But the red eye flight paired with going out till two in the morning every night, paired with watching Netflix on your computer screen, looking at your iPhone before bed every day, every week, months, years later, you can see why some people are developing diseases that historically were not found in people in their 30s, 40s, or 50s. Even 20-year-olds now are getting bellies, have uh, sarcopenic obesity and osteopenia and early menopause and low testosterone. You can see how things are starting to sort of shape up. And it's not just the foods that we're eating. It's the artificial light that we're exposed to at the wrong time of the day and the insufficient daylight, which is where I would like to, to go next here because it's really important that we recognize exactly how much light we should be getting during the day. So the daylight recommendations from this expert consensus panel is 250 lux at the level of the eye, okay? So again, that's like m most offices, some offices are even darker than that. And so this is an occupational health hazard. If you're an employer and you don't have sufficient bright light, you're not supporting these, you know, intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglial cells that is entraining the circadian clock system. So it's important. Now, of course, the best way to entrain the circadian rhythm is to go outside during the day, eat lunch outside, go move, read a book or do your work or take your phone calls, take your meetings, take your Zoom meetings while you're outside. And this is something that I will say in the last several years, I've been much more mindful about this. Even when it's cloudy out here in Seattle, it's quite often cloudy, right? So just going outside, even when it's cloudy during the winter months and just exposing my eyes and, and frequently looking up and in the direction of the sun. Very helpful, very helpful for, again, aligning and matching your circadian rhythm to the season, aligning your circadian rhythm in your sleep-wake cycles and their neurocognitive processes to help overcome seasonal affective disorder that happens to many people, myself included, by living in the Seattle area during the winter. So very important for many of us, and it makes it easier and easier now that the, the days are longer and we're getting more sun. Here's the cold water. You want to minimize exposure in the three-hour window before your desired sleep time to just 10 lux measured at the eye. Okay, this is like having 10 candles on. A candle releases about one lux. So this is like having a fire. This is <laughs> very, it's like camping. And this might be why some people feel, myself included, feel great when you go camping because guess what? Like you're off your screens, you're off the computer, you're off your iPhone, hopefully. Um, you know, you're not watching the television. And so you go to bed earlier, you have better sleep, you have less melatonin suppression, you might have more growth hormone release and, and so on. So again, this is the expert consensus recommendation is the maximum uh, melanopic exposure is 10 lux measured at the level of the eye, okay? Your phone is about five times that. So please turn down the intensity of the light on your phone. Turn, invest in light hygiene. Get some old school bulbs and, and so forth, some of the incandescent bulbs, not the compact LEDs, the so-called smart light bulbs, and do what you can to make your house um, more light friendly. Okay, now, here's what's really interesting. The, the nighttime light recommendations for a sleep environment is the sleep environment should be as dark as possible. The recommended uh, maximum ambient melanopic light exposure is one lux measured at the eye. So really important that your bedroom is dark. Please get rid of the television. No phones in the bedroom. Get some blackout curtains. You know, I know I've traveled to various, country, uh, various countries, yeah, but also various cities in North America, uh, New York, Toronto, Vancouver, British Columbia, Chicago, uh, major cities, Baltimore, and gosh, I'm really disappointed at how bright um, these cities are for people that live in this, this urban environment due to the businesses, the commercialization, uh, the, the background lighting, and the whole thing. So this is where masks come in, and I'm a big fan of Blue Blocks. They make a great sleep mask, and it's called a Remedy Sleep Mask. R-E-M, Remedy, you know, for rapid eye movement. Remedy Sleep Mask, I'll put links below. That can be very helpful. You just want your room to be very dark because, again, these photosensitive um, retinal ganglial cells, they are picking up on light. And one study, actually, I'll share with you on the screen right here, actually found, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that people that, that just had five lux of light coming in, 
this, they randomized people to two different arms of the study, had one have some artificial light coming into the room. They had, again, statistically significant increases in a myriad of different cardiovascular biomarkers related um, to, to getting a heart attack and dying from sudden cardiac death. So we should be considerate of this and we should be mindful uh, of these, of these uh, 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 long-term health consequences. It may seem benign, like everyone's doing it. It's just light, like no big deal. But it affects the rate at which you age at the cellular level. It affects the quality of your sleep. It affects your neuroendocrine, neurocognitive functions. So repairing and resynthesizing and rebuilding neurotransmitters. I mean, this is really important stuff. Uh, And now we can quantify this. So I did get this light meter. I'll just share with you on the screen on Amazon. It was $29. Uh, I have yet to play around with it. Maybe some of you have already purchased one of these different tools, but I'm going to be going around to my house, my daughter's room, uh, you know, kitchen lights and this, and making sure that we're below that 10 lux range um, or, or moving some light bulbs around or changing the size of the light bulbs or the temperature um, Kelvins of the light bulbs, doing something. So friends, I encourage you to share this message with people because I truly believe in the science and this expert you know, consensus panel corroborates this evidence that, hey, look, light is a nutrient. Darkness is a nutrient, and the diurnal rhythm of exposure to light and darkness is very important, my friend. So um, we should take this very seriously, and and I I implore you um, to do this as well, uh, to optimize your health, your aging. Um, Look, we talked about cardiovascular disease and cancer are the leading causes of mortality, and mismatched light exposure, circadian rhythm disruptions are intimately connected to the development and the, the sequela, the pathophysiology of those diseases. So we should... Be very, you know, I see so many people masking, but they have these compact fluorescents all over their house, TVs on in every room, right? So we need to be mindful of this, my friend. So please share this message. Let others know that uh, there's an expert panel now that is recommending over 250 lux during the day. Get outside, go walk, expose your body, especially your retinas, uh, your eyes, that is. Do not wear sunglasses. Driving in the car doesn't count. You need to just, you know, be one with the earth outside and expose your body. Um, to daylight as much as, po- as you possibly can. Uh, and then also make sure that in the three-hour window before bed, it's as dark as possible, minimizing artificial light exposure. So that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing this video and leaving a comment. And we will catch you on a future one down the road. Until then, be well.